Hi everyone, I'm Secretary Rodriguez, and we here at the Department of State are so excited to roll out the sixth round of our successful Downtown Revitalization Initiative and our brand new program, New York Forward. Governor Hochul knows that New York's downtowns are the heart and souls of our communities and our regions, and that's why we're taking comprehensive action to support all of them. Our cities and small towns come in many sizes and varieties, each with their own unique character and needs. And these programs are the fuel of resurgence in our cherished downtown. So we are encouraging all of you to ask questions and to take advantage of the guidance that's provided here today to present the best possible plan for your applications. Thank you for your participation and go New York forward. Welcome and thank you for joining us for the New York State Department of State's Downtown Revitalization Initiative and New York Forward application webinar. The purpose of this webinar is to provide an overview of the application requirements and evaluation criteria for the state's Downtown Revitalization Initiative and New York Forward programs. The agenda for today's webinar will include an overview of the Downtown Revitalization Initiative, or DRI, and New York Forward programs, as well as a review of the program eligibility and the application process. Today's webinar will also cover several helpful hints to applicants on how to best approach application development and how to submit a complete application for consideration by each of the state's 10 regional economic development councils. The first topic we'll cover in the webinar is an overview of what the Downtown Revitalization Initiative and New York for Forward programs are. First and foremost, the goals of both of these programs are really focused on creating active downtown environments, whether these be large, dense downtown areas or small scale rural downtowns. Other goals of the programs include attracting new businesses and investment into these downtown areas, enhancing public spaces and improving quality of life for all residents, as well as creating an environment that's welcoming to visitors. Building and attracting a diverse population through the creation of job opportunities. Promoting unique destinations that help to foster a tourism economy. Growing the local tax base through private investment providing a range of different quality of life amenities for the entire community. And then finally, really focusing on the long term sustainability of our communities and including the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and implementation of other decarbonization strategies related to renewable energy generation and energy efficiency. First, we'll provide an overview of the Downtown Revitalization Initiative Program, um, and this section will really focus on what a DRI community typically looks like and the types of projects that would often come from a DRI community. The Downtown Revitalization Initiative is currently entering its sixth round. It's a cornerstone of the state's economic development program and was launched back in 2016 to accelerate revitalization of downtowns in each of the 10 regional economic development councils across the state. The goal of this program since its inception has been to transform downtown areas into vibrant 24-7 four season centers that offer a diversity of opportunities for redevelopment, business growth, job creation, and economic and housing diversity with the ultimate goal of making sure that these downtowns can support and attract a range of different residents and also attract new businesses and investment. Since the DRI program began back in 2016, 59 communities have been awarded DRI funding totaling 600 million in investment from the state. This slide focuses on outlining what some of the typical community characteristics are of a DRI community. These characteristics will be really important to consider and also compare to the characteristics of New York forward communities, which we'll discuss in a few slides um, in terms of really making a determination of which program is the best fit for your community. It's really important to note that these descriptions and community characteristics of a DRI community shown on the slide are intended to be representative. 
because New York's downtowns and regions are unique, not every community may be perfectly captured um, by this description. So those typical characteristics of a DRI community are that DRI community areas are very walkable and dense geographic centers, um, and typically they'll be larger than a New York forward community. These larger geographic areas serve the regional community, and given that they serve the regional community, they'll have a variety of different types of amenities. Um, those amenities might include open spaces, um, special events that are held, business centers, or job nodes that are present and attract people from a much broader regional area. DRI areas typically have multimodal transportation options, including public transit, and they also have options for, for vehicular, pedestrian, and bicycle users. DRI areas are often large employment centers for the broader regional economy. They, tip, they typically offer a diversity of amenities and destinations, as well as attractions that help them to serve as a tourism node or center within the larger region. They have and can allow for higher density development. And there is existing potential for multi-story buildings, including opportunities for upper story housing. Again, recapping the DRI program in round six, $10 million will be allocated in each Regional Economic Development Council region. This will be awarded to either one community in each region or a joint application of two to three smaller communities that can make the justification that they have a single unified vision and that those two to three downtowns complement and support one another, jointly facilitating the desired transformation in all of those communities. An initial $300,000 is used from the $10 million award to pay for professional consulting services that are applied during the planning phase of the program. This $300,000 investment results in the development of a strategic investment plan, which we'll discuss a bit later in the webinar. Applications for the DRI program are submitted to the appropriate Regional Economic Development Council, and that council then nominates one community for DRI funding to the state, or in the case of a joint application, two to three communities. One of the application requirements is identifying potential projects within your community. In DRI communities, these are often larger private mixed-use projects, which may include both new development or adaptive reuse of existing buildings. These projects may also be projects that elevate the urban downtown character and enhance the regional draw to the DRI area. Public sector projects may include streetscape enhancements, improvements to public spaces, or the creation of new public spaces. Other projects that may be eligible for DRI funding include the development of design guidelines or standards, wayfinding projects and marketing strategies that, again, all have the goal of helping to facilitate investment and interest in the downtown area. In the application, applicants should demonstrate that the DRI area is ready with projects and transformative opportunities to fully utilize the $10 million award. In comparison to the DRI program, we'd now like to share some additional information on the new New York Forward program. This new program, as of this year, is intended to focus on New York's smaller communities. So these smaller communities think about hamlets across the state, villages or neighborhood scale municipal centers, as opposed to the DRI, which again is focused on those larger downtown cores. The overarching goals, however, between the New York Forward and DRI programs are consistent. Again, the New York Forward program really is focused on attracting more businesses, residents, and visitors, while also providing a high quality of life for all residents. 
This slide also focuses on those community characteristics of a New York forward community. And again, think back to the DRI community characteristics. Again, we really want to underscore that these are just representative descriptions of a New York forward community. Um, and we also recognize that the state's downtowns and regions are unique and therefore not every community might fit perfectly within this description. In general, a boundary similar to the DRI um, should be defined for a New York forward community that's tight and walkable. These areas may be less dense than DRI areas, and the focus may be more on serving the needs of the immediate local community as opposed to serving the needs of the larger regional community. Oftentimes, New York forward communities will be a bit more vehicular dependent and may have limited public transportation options or potential. Community centers in New York forward communities are typically service oriented, again, focused on serving the local community, but still providing employment and job growth opportunities within the area. Oftentimes, New York forward communities will have the characteristics of what we would often call small town charm, um, representing a unique niche history, culture, heritage, agriculture or tourism focus. Think of something like the historic, a historic Erie Canal Hamlet or potentially in New York, in New York City, a business improvement, improvement district. These areas may be appropriate for the New York Forward program. And typically the density and scale of these areas would be slightly less than that of a DRI area focused on two to four story buildings that may provide some opportunity for upper story housing. Again, similar to the description of the DRI communities, we want to further emphasize that these descriptions shown on the slide are representative and communities should continue to pursue these programs even if they don't see their community perfectly described within these descriptions. The Regional Economic Development Councils will nominate two or three communities to receive a New York Forward Award. If the Regional Economic Development Councils nominate two communities, each community will receive a $4.5 million award. If the council chooses three communities, one community will receive a $4.5 million award and two communities will receive a $2.25 million award each. Unlike the DRI, the costs related to technical assistance and to pay for consultant teams to, de to, to develop the strategic investment plans for the downtowns will not be deducted from the community awards. Similar to the DRI, potential projects should primarily focus on addressing vacancy and rehabilitation of existing structures and can include projects like renovation, redevelopment, and adaptive reuse of existing buildings. However, some new construction or the creation of new spaces within buildings may also be included and considered for New York Forward programs. Because of the emphasis on leveraging and protecting the small town charm and unique character of the downtown areas associated with the New York Forward community, projects should really focus on elevating specific artistic, cultural, architectural, and or historical qualities of those communities signage, historic markers, and wayfinding elements that contribute to focusing investment and celebrating the characteristics of the community are also desirable. And finally, similar to the DRI, applicants should be able to demonstrate that the area is ready to go with multiple projects and with multiple projects identified and is ready to utilize an award between three or five million dollars. The full application package is available on the state's downtown revitalization initiative and in New York Forward websites. The website address is included at the end of this presentation. The application package consists of seven key sections, which we'll walk through now, and we'll also talk about how they relate to the steps required for the submission of an application. 
The first section of the application package talks about the key resources and deadlines. The purpose of this section is to help familiarize potential applicants with the minimum requirements and what resources are available to assist communities in the development of their application package. The second section focuses on providing an overview of the DRI and New York Forward programs. The goal of this section is to really help you decide which funding program is the best fit for your community. So again, thinking back to those community characteristics and the type of projects that are desired from each of the programs and that are eligible can really start to help a community determine which program might be the best fit for them. The third section of the application package talks about the letter of intent. The letter of intent is requested by August 10th with the goal of being able to leverage additional resources with the timely submittal of that letter of intent. Section four of the application package talks about application tips and best practices, including resources and ideas to help communities build the strongest and best application package possible. Section five talks about the evaluation criteria and provides an understanding of what the regional economic development councils are looking for as they review applications that are submitted within their region. And finally, section six, six is the actual application and we'll walk through each of the elements that are within the application as part of this webinar. And section seven is the submission requirements including how to submit your application and to make sure that it's submitted on time and in the correct format. The second part of this webinar is focused on the program eligibility as well as the process. An important, for, an important first question is who can apply to the Downtown Revitalization Initiative or New York Forward programs? Both programs are open to any New York state, town, city, or village. Although municipalities are permitted to apply for both the DRI and New York Forward programs, they are urged to determine which program is the best fit. And again, communities can refer back to those community characteristics and project eligibility tables to help make that determination. Town, cities, and villages are eligible and counties are not eligible to apply, and nor are special districts such as fire districts. However, many of those regional entities or special districts or other agencies and organizations can be really great partners to include within the application process. While they can't be the primary applicant, they can certainly be important stakeholders and collaborators. For DRI round six only, joint applications will be accepted for two to three downtowns in the same REDC or Regional Economic Development Council region. Those joint applications have to demonstrate a shared vision and goals that can be achieved when working together. The New York Forward Program does not permit joint applications. It's also worth noting that municipalities that received a DRI award in previous rounds, so rounds one through five, are eligible to apply for a DRI or a New York Forward program for a different area within their municipality. For New York City boroughs, the eligibility as well as the application submission process is a bit different. In New York City, it's really a two-step application submission process. Organizations interested in proposing an area for the DRI and or the New York Forward programs must submit their application to the respective office of the borough president. After applications are submitted to the borough president, each of the borough president offices will develop and submit up to two applications for DRI round six and up to two applications for New York Forward for consideration by the New York City Regional Economic Development Council. We'd also like to note that one of the major differences in New York City also is that in addition to municipalities being eligible to apply 
community organizations are also eligible to submit an application to those Office of Borough Presidents as well. One of the questions we've heard is, can you apply to both the DRI and New York Forward programs? And the simple answer is yes. While you may choose to submit one area for both programs, we encourage that you carefully consider right-sizing your applications to the different programs. And by that, we mean, for example, you may want to propose a larger area for the DRI and define a smaller area within that boundary for New York Forward. So looking at the slide, the top scenario being if you define a New York Forward area that is the same as or is a smaller subset of the larger DRI area, you only need to submit one application for those two areas. If the New York Forward area or that geographic area is not fully encompassed by the DRI area, you must submit two separate applications because you're essentially submitting for two distinct geographic areas. For example, you may want to propose an entirely different area within your municipality for the DRI program and the New York Forward program. Perhaps your central business district will be a good fit for the DRI, while a distinct and separate neighborhood center might be an appropriate fit for the New York Forward program. This slide provides a snapshot of the overall application schedule as well as the overall program schedule. And we ask that you please note these important dates. Round six of the DRI and round one of New York Forward officially kicked off with the release of the application on July 25th. The letter of intent was due on August 10th. Looking ahead, submittals for New York City only are due on September 2nd, and those should be submitted electronically to the relevant borough president's office. For applicants outside of New York City, the deadline for applications is Friday, September 23rd, and that includes both the DRI and New York Forward program applications. Those are also required to be submitted electronically and should be sent to your relevant Regional Economic Development Council. Contact information for all of those REDCs is included not only in this webinar, but also in the application package. In the fall, awards will be announced on a rolling basis, similar to how they have been announced in past rounds of the DRI. And it's expected that the planning process for both DRI round six and the New York Forward programs will begin in January, 2023. The New York State Department of State has also partnered with the Land Use Law Center of Pace University to provide a series of webinars that will help communities not only think about how they approach the application for DRI or New York Forward funding, but also more generally to think about how they approach future revitalization for their communities. You can see here on the screen that an introductory webinar was held on Thursday, July 28th. Future webinars are being planned on a weekly basis and will continue through early September. All of the dates and times are listed here on the screen, as well as the link to register for these webinars. You can also access these webinars directly from the New York Forward Pro Project website, and you can also register directly on the New York Forward website. If you're unable to make any of the webinars listed here, which focus on visioning, community outreach, community needs assessments, project identification and development and implementation. Recordings of all of these webinars will, will also be posted on the New York Forward website. These educational webinars give participants an overview of the fundamental an overview of the fundamentals of downtown revitalization and will walk participants through the steps required to renew and restore their downtowns. The intended audience for these webinars are municipalities that want to engage in revitalization efforts. However, we'd really like to stress that municipalities that are ready to apply for the current round of DRI and New York Forward, as well as those that are just getting started and may want to build capacity at the local level 
um, will really find benefit in these webinars and whether that benefit is to position themselves for the current application cycle or for future DRI and New York forward rounds or other state funding opportunities. One-on-one -on -one technical assistance is also being provided to municipalities that are applying to the New York Forward Program or that are submitting a joint application to DRI Round 6. The one-on-one -on -one technical assistance will consist of office hours with technical experts who have experience in the DRI and New York Forward programs. You are guaranteed access to these office hours if you're interested and if you submitted a letter of intent on or before August 10th. If your letter of intent is received after August 10th, you are not guaranteed access to these office hours. However, we will make an effort to assist you and still provide opportunities um, to gain access to office hours if available. Registration information for the office hours will be provided upon receipt of a completed letter of intent form. As was mentioned earlier, contact information for all of the Regional Economic Development Councils is important not only from the perspective of being able to make sure you're submitting your application to the correct email address, but also if you have any questions related to application development, you can reach out to your Regional Economic Development Council with questions on the application. A list of all the REDCs are here on the screen, as well as their associated email address, which, which is also included in the application package. So this next section really focuses on how applicants should approach application development. And we'd like to start with the traits of a strong application. So the overall trait of a strong application is that it takes into account, first and foremost, that you are meeting all of the minimum requirements of the program and that you're including, at a minimum, all of the requested information that's contained within the submittal outline. And then as a next step, really making sure that all of that information is presented in a complete, concise, and thoughtfully considered manner. Please note that this round, in this round, all DRI and New York Forward applications are limited to 20 pages. A strong application is informed by robust community engagement, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that might look like in a few slides. Community engagement should be should inform the creation of a community-based vision for the future of the downtown revitalization initiative area or the New York Forward area. And projects that are identified should support and be very well aligned with that community-based vision. Project readiness and project feasibility are also important considerations. Projects must have been identified in coordination with project property owners and project sponsors um, and showing that this coordination has occurred is a really important important and imperative component of a successful application. There are 10 elements that must be included within your application and one optional element that can be also also um, for inclusion inclusion in the application. But again, we want to reiterate how important it is to make sure that all of these 10 elements are covered and fully addressed as is specifically expressed in the application package. These required components include the application cover page, the identification and justification of a proposed boundary, a vision statement, a summary of past investment and future potential, a summary of recent and impending job growth, a description of quality of life characteristics, narrative related to supporting local policies that are already in place within your community, a description of public support, the identification of transformative project opportunities, and finally, number 10, the ability 
to administer the DRI program or New York Forward program, both in the planning phase of these projects, as well as the implementation phase of the projects. Lastly, letters of support are the optional element in every application. We're now gonna walk through how to best respond to each of these elements within the application. So element one is the application cover page and the application is very clear on what information needs to be included on the cover page. Applicants should make sure that they are not forgetting to include the name of the Regional Economic Development Council region, the program or programs to which they are applying, the municipality or municipalities names in the event of a joint application to the DRI program, the downtown name that you're proposing for either the DRI or New York Forward area, the name of the county in which you are located, and the primary contact that the Regional Economic Development Council can reach out to regarding the application. With regards to the project boundary, every application must define their DRI area and or the New York forward area. And this area should be shown on a map that includes that proposed boundary. It's worth noting that this boundary has some flexibility and it may be further refined if your application is selected to, for funding and you move forward into the planning process. The geographic area can range from a corridor or a few blocks of a neighborhood to the entirety of a traditional central business district. There are no absolute minimum or maximum sizes, but a successful and strong GRI and New York forward boundary will be concentrated and should be easily walkable. In addition to including a map and a description of the DRI and our New York forward boundaries, applicants should also provide a short narrative describing how investment within this concentrated area will help to catalyze new investment and revitalization in the future. We wanted to provide a couple examples of past DRI area boundaries. Um, on the left, you'll see the Seneca Falls DRI area. This area is 118 acres in size and encompasses both sides of the Seneca River. Every destination within the boundary is located within a 10 minute walk. The map in the middle shows the Fulton DRI boundary, which is a bit larger at 185 acres. Although it's larger, it is cohesive and this one is an example of a boundary that really follows a main corridor um, within the community. Finally, the map on the right shows the Potsdam DRI area, which is 137 acres in size. And here you can see that this boundary is less of a linear shape um, and really is focused on encompassing the entirety of the city's historic business district. Ultimately, the boundary should be defined to reflect the unique characteristics of your downtown area and should be justifiable in how it relates to the community as a whole. The vision statement is critical to really setting the direction for the downtown revitalization initiative and or New York forward area. It's very important that the vision statement be identified and developed based on information gathered through community outreach. The vision statement should not be developed by one person sitting in an office, but it should be based on what the community wants to see for its future. The vision statement should reflect the unique nature of the downtown or neighborhood area, as well as the long-term aspirations of the community. So thinking ahead, not to just what the community is today, but what the community aspires to be in the next three, five, or 10 years down the road. It should be a cohesive, an inclusive statement and really take into account all of the attributes that create a successful downtown area for your community. Ultimately, any potential projects that have, are identified in the application package should be able to clearly relate back to and support this vision statement. This slide shows a few examples of DRI vision statements from other communities that have successfully gone through the downtown revitalization initiative process. These examples 
um, are from the city of Niagara Falls on the left, Staten Island in the top right, and Peekskill in the bottom right. As you read through each of these vision statements, you can see that they really focus on the unique and different elements that are important to these downtown areas, whether it be entertainment or mixed use, or focusing on leveraging the downtown's proximity to destinations and resources, residential neighborhoods, or a creative economy. Applicants must also detail investments that have occurred within and around the DRI or New York Forward areas and demonstrate that that community is able and ready to capitalize on prior public and private investment, as well as catalyze future investment to really truly transform the downtown area. The narrative for Section 4, Responding to the Past Investment and Future Potential section, should focus on summarizing those past investments um, thinking about streetscape improvement projects or the addition of individual businesses such as a new theater or anchor employer that have really moved that DRI or New York forward area and the surrounding areas um, that have recently moved into the DRI area or surrounding areas and have created new jobs. In addition, the narrative should also touch on and think about the readiness of the area to accommodate new projects and programs that might emerge out of the DRI process. The narrative should address how well the proposed area and projects support the community's readiness to participate in the DRI and New York Forward program. And the narrative should focus on the following questions and address how the application is aligned with the vision for the region. Are there existing properties, whether in need of rehab or vacant? Are there new developments that have recently been constructed or are coming online um, within the DRI or New York forward areas in the near future? Are there already anchor institutions in place that can act as important partners and collaborators to facilitate future growth? Has municipal investment and commitment made in the downtown area, either through public dollars or through the oversight and facilitation of grants by the municipality, really made improvements recently to the, especially the quality of life of these areas? And is there opportunity for the development of energy efficiency projects, green job opportunities, um, and the application of smart growth principles within the community? Finally, also consider if there's active investment in the arts and culture sectors within the community. Studies have shown the importance of having an active cultural and art base within a downtown and how that can really positively impact economic development. There are also some case studies on the DRI website that show how past DRI communities have leveraged arts and culture as part of their revitalization strategy. Again, and kind of last note on the slide, as you respond to this section, really think about your recent past investments that align with all the bullets on the slide and that we just walked through, as well as any future potential investments that you know are likely to come online in the near term. Section five focuses on recent or impending job growth within or adjacent to the DRI and New York forward areas. When responding to this section, applicants should highlight jobs, job availability, and job growth within or near the downtown. Think about any new major jobs that have been created in the past five years or are planned um, in the near term. Are there any new or expanding employers, employers that might be coming into the community in the next few years? And if so, applicants should also detail how that job growth will attract a diverse workforce, support planned redevelopment efforts, and also make growth sustainable in the long term. Section six focuses on quality life characteristics of the downtown area. And in this section of the application, applicants are asked to identify what 
is in what amenities are in place that make these downtowns attractive and livable communities for a diverse population. So think about how your community can support and does support residents and visitors of all ages, incomes, mobility, and cultural backgrounds. Within this section of the applications, you should focus on developing a narrative that talks about opportunities within your community for housing, both that exist or that are proposed to fill gaps to ensure that housing is available at different levels of affordability and type. Think also about commercial and retail businesses and how they're being supported both today and envisioned to be supported in the future. How can the downtown support a variety of different food options, for example, and choice, particularly emphasizing the availability of healthy food options for all residents? In this section, um, communities should also highlight any opportunities or initiatives to decarbonize the buildings and the downtown and also to integrate more energy efficient buildings in the future. Communities should highlight any aspects of the community that really support walkability, bikeability, and multimodal transportation and access. Um, within the downtown area and how these multimodal systems really connect residents to other destinations such, such as recreation, job centers, and healthcare facilities. Another great thing to highlight in this section is how the downtown is focused on providing community spaces um, and public spaces that are available to host special events and also host a diversity of programming to serve all residents. And then also think about your public infrastructure, um, including but not limited to broadband, and how this infrastructure is really set up to serve your existing community um, and has the capacity to also support future growth. In section seven of the application, um, this section is focused on describing supportive local policies that the community has in place um, and that are really supportive of the overarching goals of the DRI and New York Forward programs that we described at the beginning of this presentation. These might be policies that are already in place within the community or that are in the process of, be, of being developed or able to be created and implemented in the near term. This section of the application will summarize and should summarize any plans and policies in place as well as those plans and policies that are anticipated. This could include the identification of any other planning documents that are inclusive of the DRI and or New York Forward areas, whether it be a comprehensive plan, part of a local waterfront revitalization program, or potentially part of a brownfield opportunity area, just to name a few examples. Modern zoning codes and zoning updates, particularly those that focus on sustainability and enhancing walkability of the downtown area, should also be noted and mentioned in your application. And if your community has adopted the New York State Stretch Energy Code or has been designated as a clean energy or climate smart community, please note these designations within your application. If you have a downtown management entity, a business improvement district, or a local land bank, those are other organizations that can be helpful and complement a DRI or New York Forward area and should also be noted in your application. Transit-oriented poli policies or regulatory agreements, such as complete streets policies, also help to achieve and show the commitment of the municipality in implementing those policies and really supporting an active downtown space accessible to all. Any non-discrimination laws or protections of diverse populations should also be noted, as well as any policies that, may, that would make your community eligible for age-friendly community certification. This is just a sample list shown on the slide of the types of policies and plans that you might want to note um, and identify in your application to show that your community's commitment um, to show that your community is committed to meeting the goals of the DRI and New York Forward programs. Section eight of the application focuses on public support. And we've mentioned a couple times so far how important public support and feedback is to the DRI and New York Forward program processes. Anyone submitting an application must hold at least one public event 
during the development of the DRI or New York Forward application, but we'd like to reiterate that this single public event is the bare minimum. The importance of meaningful community outreach as part of the development of the boundary area, the vision statement, and the identification of potential projects cannot be overstated. In addition to the one required public event, in past years, communities have also done open calls for project proposals to solicit ideas from property owners and community members about which projects they feel would be the most transformative within their downtown area. Other applicants have also completed and developed a project website so that they can ensure there's full transparency with regard to the application process. And again, also use this website as a means to achieve consistent communication with the community, as well as accept feedback and input from community members. Many communities, especially as we get here to the end of summer and early fall, are holding special events and programs, and these are really great opportunities to reach a captive audience in re relationship to your GRI and New York Forward application. For example, the community or you as the applicant could set up a table at one of these existing special events where you know a lot of members of the community will be gathering to solicit feedback um, and provide some interactive activities to get ideas about potential projects for your application and also solicit information related to the community's vision for future downtown revitalization. If there have been other recent or ongoing planning initiatives that have been happening in your community, such as the creation of a complete streets plan or an update to your comprehensive plan or a downtown specific plan that includes broader visioning that is also related to your downtown revitalization initiative or New York forward area, those projects and that engagement should also be described within your application. Section nine of the application focuses on identifying transformative project opportunities. With regards to the identification of projects, we'd like to point out that there are case studies for successful DRI projects available for review on the state's downtown revitalization initiative website. And you can see the link provided here in the yellow box to the right. However, if you go straight to the DRI website, you can also scroll down the page a bit and see the diversity of project types that have been successful in past rounds of the DRI. Municipalities are required to identify a range of transformative project opportunities within their application, and these project opportunities should be ready and poised for implementation. Projects may be public or private, and they should align very closely with the, the community vision statement also provided in the application as well as align with the state's program goals for the DRI and New York Forward programs. Typically, transformative projects are publicly supported and they must be vetted as part of the public outreach effort. They should also demonstrate benefits to the broader community and not just to the individual project sponsor or property owner. Projects that are identified in your application should be ready for implementation within the next one to three years. And so other resources that might be needed or other pre-development work that might be required prior to implementing the project should be able to be completed within that one to three year timeframe. Projects identified in application should leverage other funding sources to the greatest extent possible. DRI and or New York forward funding should not be the only funding source that is identified. And particularly, that is the case for private sector projects. Um, and where possible, additional funding that can fill the gap in financing should be identified that makes the project feasible and successful. And ultimately, the project sponsor must have the ability to implement the project and sustain the proposed project once and if funding is awarded. While communities are not required to submit potential projects, pardon me, while communities are required to submit potential projects as part of the application, there is no guarantee that the projects contained in the application will ultimately be awarded funding. 
We'd also like to note that if a community is awarded DRI or New York Forward funding, additional projects may be identified during the planning process. This slide provides an example of one of the successful projects um, that stems from DRI round one, and it was the Solar Village project in the city of Geneva. The goal of the Solar Village was to create energy efficient micro apartments, public space improvements, and emphasize green manufacturing. The project was initially identified as part of the DRI strategic investment plan back in 2017, and the image on the far right shows the successful execution and implementation of the project as it stands here today in Geneva. We'd like to note that this example of a final strategic investment plan, which is shown right in the middle, um, is again, just that, a final strategic investment plan and applications are not required or expected to develop projects to this level of detail. The 10th and final required element of an application focuses on administrative capacity. Administrative capacity is important from the applica applicant and municipal perspective. Again, not only in the planning phase to help manage the planning process, but also to assist with implementation of municipal projects that may be awarded as part of the DRI and our New York Forward Grant Program. The application narrative should provide an explanation of how any existing staff and resources that the municipality that the municipality has will be utilized to oversee the planning process, as well as the contracts for awarded projects. How the community will approach operations and maintenance of any municipal projects once they're constructed should also be noted in this section of the application. Responses to this section should also highlight key potential partners that can support the community in administering the grant and, admin and assist with project implementation. Potential, partner potential partners may include counties, regional planning commissions, and or industrial development agencies. Lastly, letters of support are optional but are certainly recommended to show the commitment of local leaders, partners, stakeholders, and other organizations within the community. The letters of support should focus on how the DRI or New York Forward funding could help advance the community's vision, how the partner or stakeholder writing the letter of support can help to participate in the planning process and ensure its success, and how they might be involved in helping to implement and oversee the grant program in the future. So the last portion of this webinar focuses on the submission of a complete application. Again, we want to review general requirements to make sure that they are clear and that nobody misses anything that's critically important to submitting a completed application. In addition to double checking your application checklist and ensuring you're including all 10 required components, and then also possibly the optional letters of support. All applications should be as complete and succinct as possible. Applications are limited to 20 pages, and this includes any maps or graphics that are incorporated into the application. The cover page and any letters of support that you decide to include do not count towards the 20 page limit. Again, we just want to reiterate that the cover page and any letters of support including, included in the application may go above and beyond the maximum 20 page limit for the application package. Applications must be submitted as a single PDF document that is 15 megabytes or smaller in size, and that size threshold will help to ensure that it's able to be emailed and transmitted to the appropriate Regional Economic Development Council. We also just wanted to provide another quick review of those application components and then also a reminder of application deadlines.
In New York City, it really is a two-phased approach. The first is that applications must be submitted to the Office of the Borough President no later than 4 p.m. on Friday, September 2nd, 2022. So again, if you are in New York City and you're interested in submitting an application to the DRI and or New York Forward programs, you must submit your application no later than 4 p.m. on Friday, September 2nd to your respective Office of the Borough President. For all other locations and regions across the state located outside of New York City, your applications must be submitted via email to the relevant REDC representative no later than 4 p.m. on Friday, September 23rd. So again, communities outside of New York City, your applications are due to your respective REDC by Friday at 4 p.m. on September 23rd. And lastly, just a reminder that there is a wealth of background information and resources, links to the community capacity building webinars and information on other successful DRI projects on the state's websites for both the New York Forward Program and the Downtown Revitalization Initiative Program. Those websites are listed here on the screen and also contained in the application package. We wanna say thank you for taking time today to listen to this webinar and also best of luck in developing your application.